Hi, and welcome to another edition of Jules Voto's Photo Focus. Now, lately I've been talking quite a bit about the new Nikon Z8. I've done several videos on it, and I will in the future. But right now my camera's back at Nikon for that service advisory, and hopefully I'll have it back in a few days. But in the meantime, I like to go back about talking about film cameras. And two in particular. Film has been increasing in popularity in recent years, and I've done a bunch of videos on film cameras, but I just like to talk about two in particular and kind of compare them, and maybe we'll come to a conclusion as to which is the better buy. There are two cameras dating from the 60s. We have the Nikon FTN of 1968, and the Nicromat FTN of 1967. I have videos on both of these cameras separately, which goes into all the controls and features and how to use them, and I will put a link to those videos in the description below. But let's just start real quick with the Nikon F. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Nikon F was introduced in 1959, and the model I have here, actually the body is pretty much unchanged from 1959. It's just the meter finders that were updated. And this was the latest meter finder for the Nikon F, the FTN finder. It was introduced in 1968. Okay, it was the last meter finder for the Nikon F. The Nichromat FTN was originally introduced as the Nikon FT in 1965 with a full area meter. It measured the entire focus screen. The FTN of 1967 added center weighted metering. So they eliminated the overall averaging meter and went with center weighted metering just like the center weighted meter in the Nikon FTN. Okay, so how do these two cameras compare? Both have the Nikon F bayonet mount. Okay, it's a three claw bayonet mount. To mount a lens on the camera, you set it to 5.6, and you will notice a coupling prong here. Okay, all the pre AI Nikon F mount lenses, and even a lot of the AI. Nikon F mount lenses have this mounting prong, okay? You simply match the dots, the black dot on the lens with the black dot on the camera, turn it to the left to mount, and then twist the aperture ring to its smallest aperture. This is a 51.4, so it goes to 16, and then twist it wide open to 1.4, and on the front of the finder, you will see an indication that the camera knows, that the meter knows, that this is a 1.4 lens. That's important to get proper exposure. Nikromat FTN works pretty much the same way. Let's take this lens off, okay? We set it to 5.6. You see the coupling prong, which will mesh with the coupling pin around the lens mount. Line them up, twist it to 16. This is a 50 millimeter 2.0. Switch it, uh, twist it to 16, then twist the aperture ring to 2.0. And on this, you will see it on the side of the lens mount. Okay, so mounting is exactly the same. Advanced lever. Advanced lever is in the same place, of course, on both cameras. The Nikon F could use one stroke which is about 136 degrees, or several smaller strokes. The Nikromat FTN, you could only do one full stroke. Not a big difference. The shutter release on the Nikromat FTN is threaded in the middle, as well as around the base of the shutter release. So it will take a conventional cable release, or a Nikon-style cable release that threads to the bottom of the shutter release. The Nikon F does not have 
the center thread on the shutter release, so you must use a Nikon style shutter release, which actually are more secure and uh, they're not going to pop off. Okay, uh, let's look at the front of the camera here. On the Nikon F, we have a self timer. To activate the self timer, you just you have three settings here, three, six, and I believe it's 10 seconds. And there's a little button on the front. Shutter is cocked. You press the button on the front of the camera. And the shutter will fire. Okay, if you decide you're not going to use the self timer, you could just go ahead and take pictures, even with the self timer wound. All right, then you could always release it later after you've taken your picture. With the Nikromat FTN, self timer's in the same spot. Okay, you must press the shutter release in order to activate the self timer which means if you've planned on using the self timer and then decide you don't want to, well, you're going to have to use it because there's no way to set it back without pressing the shutter release. That's about it on the right side of the camera for the Nikromat, just the self timer. On the Nikon F, we have a depth of field preview button. We also have a depth of field preview button on the Nikon map, but it's on the top. I think it may be a little more convenient to get to on the top of the camera. And we have a mirror release on the right side of the camera on the Nikon F. To, uh, to use the mirror release, we must turn this little dial here, press the shutter release, the mirror flips up and stays up. We then turn this to drop the mirror. The problem with that is you are wasting a frame. Okay, you must press the shutter release, mirror flips up, shutter opens and closes, and the mirror stays up. On the Nikromat, on the left side of the camera, we have this lever here, and we just press it down to raise the mirror. We could stay up as long as we we want. Okay, now normally you're going to use that for long exposures on, on either camera, of course. Also, the mirror lockup is required if you're going to mount certain fisheye lenses, certain fisheye Nikkor lenses, or the old 20 millimeter F4, which came out probably not long after the original Nikon F, uh, and uh, that had a separate viewfinder. So, much better implementation of mirror lockup on the Nikromat. So that's one big plus if you're going to need mirror lockup for the Nikromat. Both have a lens release button on the left side of the camera in the same place, works the same way. Now another big difference between these cameras, the shutter speed dial on the Nikon FTN is on the top of the camera. And you have speeds from T to B and from 1 to 1 1,000th 1, of a second. Now, let me just explain real quick in case you're not sure what T does. And in my videos on these cameras, I go into detail on all this. But the way T works is you press the shutter release and the shutter will remain open until you turn the shutter speed dial. The way B works, you press the shutter release and the shutter will remain open until you release your finger. Generally, the way you use that is with the locking cable release. Okay, so you have speeds T, B, and then one to one one thousandth of a second with a flash sync speed of one sixtieth of a second. It will sync with electronic flash at one sixtieth of a second. The Nikromat has speeds from B to one one thousandth of a second. There's no T, but the shutter speed dial is not in the conventional place. It is around the lens mount, and you change your shutter speeds with your left hand. Personally, I think it's a better implementation in some respects because you can change your shutter speed easily with your left hand while looking through the camera. 
and you do see your shutter speeds in the viewfinder with the Nichromat as well as with the Nikon FTN. However, if you have your shutter speed set to 1 15th of a second, or even 1 8th of a second, the shutter speed handle here to change shutter speeds blocks the lens release lock. So if you're set for an eighth or a fifteenth, you got to change that shutter speed so you can access the lens release. Okay, now let's come to the top of the camera again. Uh, we pretty much went over the F. Um, on the left side, we have standard rewind knob on both cameras. To rewind film on the Nikromat, you press a button in on the bottom of the camera, and then you turn your rewind knob to rewind the film back in. Pretty conventional. On the Nikon F, it works a little differently to rewind film. On the collar of the shutter release button, you just have to turn it to the right to the R, okay? And then you can rewind film. When you're done, you turn it back to A for advance. Now, there's another difference here. You will notice neither of these cameras have an accessory shoe or a hot shoe. With the Nikon F, and I, I'm saying Nikon F, this is a Nikon FTN model, but it is a Nikon F body with the Nikon FTN finder. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with referring to it as a Nikon F or a Nikon FTN. On the Nikon F, you have a flash unit coupler, an AS1 flash unit coupler. It slides over the rewind knob and then you just turn it to lock in place. It gives you a hot shoe, but it's off to the side a little bit. And if you have a flash mounted and you want to rewind film, you have to take it off. Okay? The Nikromat FTN does not have that implementation over the rewind knob. It just has a standard rewind knob. In order to mount a flash on the camera, you use an accessory shoe. It's an optional accessory. What you must do is unscrew the eyepiece. And this eyepiece is, is hard plastic, so I'm going to talk about that in a second here. You unscrew it. You place the shoe on. And then you put the eyepiece back, and that holds it in place. Now, it is not a hot shoe. It's just what we call a cold shoe. So you would still need to plug the flash in to the X terminal here, if it's electronic flash on the side of the camera. This camera also has an M terminal. That was for flash bulbs. I mean, I don't even know if they're even made anymore. I don't think you could even get them anymore. So we don't really concern ourselves with that. So you screw this in, eyepiece back in, and now you have a cold shoe on the top of the camera. Okay, now as far as the meters, the Nikon F, TN, you set the film speed on the top of the shutter speed dial. You just raise up this dial here and just turn it to set your film speed. Film speeds go from 6 to 6400. On the Nikromat, you set your film speed around the lens mount towards the bottom. In order to change ISO on the Nikromat, which by the way goes from 12 to 1600 speed, you must hold the lever for the shutter speed and then move this plastic tab here. And the reason I'm using a screwdriver, a little mini screwdriver, is it's very difficult to move. So that's probably the worst feature of the Nikromat is the way you set the ISO, or back in the day we called it ASA. It was much improved in later models of the Nikromat. Both of these cameras use center-weighted metering, which concentrates 60% of its sensitivity in the 12 millimeter circle in the center of the viewfinder. However, you're going to find, if looking for these cameras on eBay or at a used camera store, very few of these older meters still work. So you could use a handheld meter, you could use the Sunny 16 rule, you could get a free, there's free meter apps at the App Store for um, your iPhone or your Android. So um, 
don't worry too much about the meter. If you find one with the working meter, great. You just, you just want to make sure it's accurate. So we'd like, it's a good idea to check it against a newer camera, possibly with a meter that you know is accurate or a handheld meter. Okay. By the way, no two meters are going to be exactly the same. You're going to be off a little bit. But when shooting film, especially when shooting black and white film or color negative film, you could be off on your exposure. It doesn't have that much effect. With slide film, you need to be more precise. And uh, when in doubt with film, you overexpose a little bit. Film is much more tolerant of overexposure. Okay, so what else? One of the big negatives, I'm gonna get, by the way, I'm gonna get to the meters. I know some of you are thinking who know about these cameras or are thinking about the, the interchangeable finders and screens on the F. I'll get to that in a minute. But I wanna talk about one of the huge advantages, in my opinion, and probably in a lot of people's opinion, of the Nikromat over the Nikon F. And that is the Nikromat has a hinge back. Very easy to open. Could standing up in a crowd, whatever, easy to load film. The Nikon F has a removable back. Not hinged. You must remove the entire back to load film. What do you do in a crowd? Where do you put the back? You know, stick it in your pocket, put it down on the ground, whatever. So that is probably the biggest negative of the Nikon F. Now, the fact that it has this removable back also meant that it could take a motor drive. Actually, there were two models for this, the F36 and the F250 motor drive. They mounted, you removed the back, added the motor drive, but the cameras needed to be modified for Nikon in order to accept that motor drive. And you were then able to remove the motor drive and put the conventional back, back on. The Nikromat takes, does not take a motor drive. There was never a motor drive available for the Nikromat until much later when the Nikromat EL came along and it was just a winder that attached to the bottom of the camera. Since we just had the back off, let's just talk briefly about the shutters. The Nikon F has a horizontal traveling titanium shutter. It's rated to over 100,000 actuations before failure. And I know many of them went way beyond that. The Nikromat FTN has a vertical travel, copal square shutter, it's metal. Uh, doesn't have as long an expected service life. I believe it's somewhere around 50,000, so half the number of exposures before failure. But that copal square shutter in the Nikromat has the advantage of giving you a higher flash sync speed, up to 1 1 25th of a second, whereas the titanium shutter in the Nikon will only give you a flash sync speed of 1 60th of a second. So if you're the kind of person that likes to do fill flash photography outdoors, the Nikromat is a better choice. Now here is another big advantage to the Nikon FTN. This FTN finder is removable. Now I'm not going to take it off right now because you need, sometimes you could take it off with your fingernail and I think I did. All right, it comes off and you have access to the focusing screen. And Nikon made, I don't know, 18 to 20 different focusing screens for this camera. You say, well, what, what's the advantage of that? There are focusing screens tailored to certain lenses, to certain light conditions. They have focusing screens that were, are designed for low light photography. Probably the most useful one is one called the K screen. It has a split image in the middle surrounded by a microprism donut. That's great for general photography, but also that split image gives you a big advantage when focusing wide angle lenses. Wide angle lenses are more difficult to focus on a single lens reflex camera. Actually, a rangefinder camera makes focusing a wide angle lens easier 
SLRs are great for focusing longer lenses, but the, the Micromat has just a plain focusing screen with a micro prism center spot, okay? And that micro prism works well with normal lenses and longer lenses, but it's not as great with wide angle lenses, especially in low light. So more choices there with the Nikon F. It's also great you could clean out the camera really easily. With the Nikon F, the FTN finder is the standard finder with a meter. Okay, there's also something they call the standard prism finder. I'll just snap this baby back on here. You also have a waist level finder that's available. You have a high magnification finder where you look down into it and it magnifies the screen several times. There's also a prism reflex sport finder. So you have more options here if you're going to use those optional finders. Okay, and with the standard prism finder, it makes the camera much more compact. And as you can see, while the weight of these cameras is very similar, the F is a little heavier. Uh, not sure how much more, but it's not a lot, maybe 100 grams or so. But you could see how much more compact, because of the prism, really, that the, F, the uh, Nikromat FTN is. Okay, so, oh, one other thing, one other thing. The Nikon FTN finder eyepiece is threaded to take accessories, a right angle finder, a magnifier, so, as, so is the one on the Nikromat FTN. However, you must remove the eyepiece in order to put those accessories in. One of the disadvantages with this eyepiece, and, and this was my first Nikon camera, not this particular one, but my first Nikon camera was an FTM back in 1972. Uh, and I wore glasses, I've worn glasses since, I don't know, fourth grade. And the eyepiece is hard plastic, so I would scratch my glasses using this finder, using this eyepiece. So they sold a rubber eye cup. However, there's a more, there's a newer solution to this, and I've spoken about this before. And if you look at my Nikromat FTN video, you will see that. Nikon makes a rubber eyepiece that screws right in to the Nikromat. It also will screw in to the F eyepiece. And it's small, and it's in rubber, and it will not scratch your glasses. You can find these. They are still available new. It's the eyepiece for the FM3A, FM2, FA, and FE2. I believe it will work on the earlier FE and uh, FM as well. And, of course, it works on the FTM finder. It will even work on the Nikon F2 finder. So I find this is a much better solution than using the original eyepiece, especially if you wear eyeglasses. Okay, so now let's go over the main differences between these two cameras and the pros and cons for various types of photography and my recommendation if you're looking to buy one today. You're going to find, if you go on eBay or your local camera store that sells used equipment or, or anywhere you can buy used equipment. You're going to find that the FTN, the Nikon FTN, is going to be more expensive. It's the classic camera from the 1960s. If you want to own the camera, the main 35 millimeter camera of the 1960s, the camera that a lot of the pros used, a lot of those famous pictures you've seen from the 60s. If you watch any of the movies on the Vietnam War where there's, you see photojournalists, they're carrying Nikon cameras, almost exclusively Nikon cameras. So if you want one of those iconic cameras, if that makes you feel like a better photographer because you're using the camera that those photographers used, you may lean towards the Nikon FTN. Knowing some of the disadvantages, if you want to use mirror lockup, the Nikromat's a better camera. Uh, if you're going to be changing film on the go, 
the Nikromat's a better camera because you don't have that interchangeable back. If you're going to be photographing a lot with wide angle lenses in low light, the Nikon FTN is a better choice because it has those interchangeable screens. If you, you want to be doing some low angle photography with a waist level finder, you're, uh, let's say, doing landscapes and you want to put the camera right down on the ground, Nikon F is a better camera because you have the availability of waist level viewfinders. If you want to save a good bit of money, Nikromat's a good choice. Okay, so which one do you choose? Well, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the images from these two cameras. If I take this 50mm 2.0 off the Nikromat, put it on the Nikon F, take some of the same pictures in the same location with the same lighting that I did, let's say, with this Nikromat, Films process, and I'm looking at the images, I'm not going to know which camera took which picture. So image quality, unlike digital cameras where the sensors are different in different cameras, as long as the film is the same, the lens is the same, you're not going to see a difference between these two cameras. So, you know, which one do you choose? I guess it all comes down to the style of photographer you are, what type of photography you prefer. So ultimately, the choice is yours. Look at my videos on each camera. I have separate video on the Nikon F, as well as one on the accessories for the F. And I have one on the Nikromat FTN. So look at those videos. I'll give you a lot more details on each. Um, price, again, you're going to save some money picking up the Nikromat. I got this body. Now, the meter doesn't work. I got this body a couple of years ago for $15, and it's in pretty nice shape. I mean, it looks almost new. I forget what I paid for this FTN. It was definitely more. I think I got it with some other accessories. A lot of times you could get a really good deal if you buy a bundle. You know, you buy the body with several lenses and other accessories. You can sometimes get a really good deal. So... In conclusion, you can't go wrong with either camera. They're both very well made, great performers. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. You will see my email address in the comments below. Send me an email. I am happy to help anyone who has questions about these cameras or anything photography related. So thank you, and I will talk to you next time.